Welcome back. Brett Moffitt still out in front. Sergio Pena runs second. Darrell Wallace Jr. third. Eddie McDonald in fourth. Brett Moffitt has opened up a little bit of a gap over the second place car right now of Sergio Pena. You see Corey LaJoy moves in on the 71 of Eddie McDonald. Boy running fifth right now. Darrell Wallace Jr. after starting on the pole. Had a great practice earlier. Wanted to win everything that was possible that you could win at this racetrack. Well, now he's dropping back. Already into that third spot. And McDonald challenged him earlier for that position, but now it looks like they've settled into these spots and are holding on to them. The only non-top-10 finish of the season for Darrell Wallace Jr. was right here at Loudon when he finished 30th. Darrell Wallace Jr. coming off of two wins earlier this year, four wins in his career. The most recent race at Greenville Pickens was a sixth-place finish. Those we see the battle for 14th, Michael Cherry, Ben Kennedy. Yeah, this group right here has been battling since the drop of the green flag. Some of the positions change around a little bit, but they've all been in this little group right here. Stayed pretty tight with each other. Chad both in 98, and you see Chase Elliott going way up high in the nine. I call it way up high, about three lanes up here at New Hampshire. Such a flat racetrack, you don't normally see people running up in that third group. Saw Chase's dad, Bill. He's up on top of their spotter stand, spotting for Chase here. Chase doing a nice job this season. Coming off his best career finish last time out of Greenville. Chase Elliott bringing home a third place finish in that race. We we'll see him running back behind Chad Boat now. Trying to find grip around this racetrack. Even though we're relatively early into this racetrack, you're always searching for grip. Yeah, without a doubt. And that's why you can move around this racetrack. Even though the bottom's a little bit flatter, sometimes you get those left sides down there and the difference in transition between the flat and the bank give you just a little bit of grip. Really hard, though, to get the power down from the flat part of the racetrack up off the corner. You make a lot of ground up through the center, but you have to be able to keep that power down up off the corner. We just saw that out of Ben Kennedy in the 96 as he was down toward the bottom of the racetrack. Now a good battle for the seventh position. Suarez on the inside and Max Gresham in the 18 on the outside. Yes, yeah, Suarez was able to get by Max earlier, but Max is going to make that outside groove work. That's a perfect example there of there's the fact that there's some grip on the outside. So Gresham working on the high side of the racetrack, trying to get by Suarez down on the low portion of the racetrack. Suarez a little sideways getting into turn number one. See how he makes up the ground through the center of the corner. Then off the corner, you see the momentum from the outside that Max has. See the point lead. 65 points was the difference coming into this race for Max Gresham. He's got to keep Brett Moffitt in sight. Does not want to lose that huge lead that he's built up with just two races to go. And right now with Brett Moffitt leading the race there, he took over the lead you know, fairly early. If he could get this win and lead the most laps, that would be the full maximum 190 points. So uh, Max needs to try to get some positions if he can. Trying to pick off some of the drivers in front of him again. Just getting by the 16 of Daniel Suarez and setting his sights on the top 10. There's the 46 of Brandon Godovic running with the 14 of Dylan Presnell. That's a battle for the 10th spot. Dylan Presnell working his way up the racetrack as we see Brandon Godovic down on the bottom of the racetrack trying to get by. You can see a perfect illustration of the difference between the flat on the bottom and a little bit more banking. You can see actually see under the center of the car the kind of the separation there. Now Brandon Godovic, a good run through one and two, gets to the side of the 14 of Dylan Presnell, but not able to clear him and get by. Same situation, just hard to get even that into the racetrack, hard to get the power down when the racetrack's a little bit flatter down there. We've seen some of the drivers use these slower lap cars like Jeff Anton to use as a pick to get by, but that time Jeff Anton stayed on the bottom of the racetrack and both worked to the high side. There's Benny Gordon and the two of Ryan Gifford racing side by side. Ryan has a spot now as they enter the corner. Ryan Gifford just in front of Benny Gordon as they work their way down the back stretch. Benny had a top five run here earlier this year. That allowed he finished fifth. That's his best finish of the season. Those two running 12th and 13th now. We'll work our way back. You see still the four cars we talked about earlier. Michael Cherry. Ben Kennedy, then there's Chad Boat and Chase Elliott, those two racing for position. Chase Elliott moved to the inside now as he's running in the 17th spot just in front of Chad Boat. Boat going to the high side, trying to get that grip once again. Look at the momentum, though, that Chad Boat gets up off the corner there from a little bit higher banking. 
Chase had a good run through the center, pulled dead even with him, and Chad was able to open up and beat him by two or three car lengths down the back straightaway. Now they both run that higher line through three and four. Still chasing after Michael Cherry and Ben Kennedy. Ben went off and ran some races on the in the West Series while we had a bit of a hiatus a month or so ago. Battling for the 15th spot. Michael Cherry's best finish was fourth, but it was a year ago back at Gresham. So he hasn't broke into the top five in the 2011 season. He had a solid seventh place run at Richmond earlier this year. That's his best of the season. See side by side battles all over the racetrack. There's Benny Gordon again with Ryan Gr Gifford sideways. A little bit of sparks out of the back of Benny Gordon's car, which is rare this late in the race. You wouldn't expect the the bottom of the frame to be hitting because the pressures have come up now in the tires. And Corey Williams, the 88 car, joins that battle. By day, he's a fabricator for Hendrick Motorsports. Still looks like problems for the 66. Benny Gordon slowing on the racetrack and the sparks continuing to come out. Must have a problem, maybe with the right front. Derek, what's going on with the 66 team? Tough break for Benny Gordon out there. You can see the right front sparks coming out from the corner of that car. He's got one top five and two top tens this year. This is the same car that he finished fifth with in the July race, but looks like he's having trouble out there right now. Yeah, it looks like that tire's coming apart, so there's going to be some debris on the racetrack. Got to believe that's going to bring a caution out here. Haven't seen one as of yet. Although we did see some of the tire come off there. Yeah, you can see the rubber flapping on that car. See some of it rolling across the racetrack to the outside. We stay green. Haven't seen the flagman reach for the yellow flag yet. It's a Benny. full mile that Benny's yeah. had to drive around on that flat tire. A long way for Benny Gordon to get back onto pit road. A little bump there out of the 07 of Corey LaJoy trying to get by Eddie McDonald in the 71. Eddie did a nice job saving that car. He was pretty sideways there after that little bit of bump. They've got some lap cars in front of them. There's Tom Hessert, the 37. Andrew Smith up there. Oh, the caution is out now for that debris from Benny Gordon's tire. So the caution comes out, Phil. They're in their window. Will we see a lot of guys come down pit road? That's what the gamble is going to be. Now, they know that they can make it from here the rest of the way, but they know the weather is threatening. Do they want to stop now, or do they want to hold out here? Normally, everyone follows the leader of the race onto pit road. We'll see if Brett Moffitt makes the hard left turn. Well, we must have a lot of meteorologists on top of the pit boxes today because the top cars did not come to pit road. Derek, what's going on? Well, guys, during that caution flag, a lot of the crews started setting up to do their pit stops up and down pit road. So we went running down to Brett Moffitt's crew, and I asked Mike Ricci, are you going to take tires or fuel? He looked at me and he said, who says we're going to pit? After looking at that weather radar, we're not going to stay out. Big gamble, Phil? What do you think? Well, obviously, they're, they're looking at the weather, and they know what they're talking about. They know that they can go probably around 100 laps without stopping. So, you know, we're only 30-some laps into this race, so they have a long time. Caution comes out again. We did have about four or five cars that were on the lead lap, did come to pit road. Alex Bowman, Ryan Gifford, Chad Boat all came to pit road that time. So it'll be interesting to see if we keep going green and, and, and we get another caution later, if those guys elect to come to pit road, then the cars that pitted on this caution will be cycled up front. Magic number may be 63. That would be the halfway point of this race. Again, it's a 125 lap race. You got to get past the halfway point for it to be official. And again, they are talking about rain in the area. It could be that they are racing for that halfway point. Yeah, without a doubt here. That's uh, that's why that's how the engineers and the crew chiefs really earn their money down there on that pit box. Mayor Wallace Jr. just in front of the 15 of Matt DiBenedetto again still out front is a double zero of Brett Moffitt a good battle for the 10th spot Corey Williams on the inside Brandon Godovic on the outside yeah, Corey Williams doesn't get a whole lot of starts in the series they've been doing a nice job there they're battling for a top 10 spot there's Michael Cherry the A car behind him there but that white car behind Michael Cherry was the 11 of Robert Johnson that's Junior Johnson's son Hall of Famer from NASCAR just making a few starts this year in the NASCAR k and Pro Series East Division Robert ran here last time, had a 17th place finish. That is his best of his limited number of starts this year. Brandon Gondovic trying to get by Brandon McReynolds in the 42. A lot of Brandons there. Brandon and Brandon side by side as they go down the back stretch. 42 car Brandon McReynolds, a brand new car built for this race. Doing a nice job, had a good top 10 qualifying run with it. 
How about the 88? Of Corey Williams making the move to the inside. He thinks better of it. Falls back behind Godovic. Almost made it three wide there coming out of four. Yeah, that 88 car is a car that we've seen with Jody Lavender run some this year. Jody always competitive here in the East Series. Brandon McReynolds, Brandon Godovic, and Corey Williams. Running nose to tail now as they're down the back stretch. Just behind them, Michael Cherry in the eight. A long green flag run to start this race has enabled Brett Moffitt to get out front. And once the green flag dropped once again after the most recent caution, he's been able to put some distance between himself and second place Sergio Pena. In the middle of our screen right there, the 0 7 of Coiler Joy. He's had four previous starts here with a couple top tens at Loudon, including a, a third place finish is his best. The Benedetto and Eddie McDonald. McDonald looking. Low on that 15. De Benedetto holding on to the spot. Remember, we talked about Matt De Benedetto being a former winner here at Loudon in the East Series when he was driving for Joe Gibbs. Running a little higher up the racetrack, and Eddie McDonald taking that lower line, trying to cut the distance through one and two. Still not able to get the right front of that 71 underneath the quarter panel of the 15. Of De Benedetto. See the 71, a Chevrolet, the 15 of Matt De Benedetto, a Toyota, and the 07 of Corey LaJoy right behind them, a Ford. Would you, would you believe that every single race this year has been won by a Toyota? It's been shocking because there are obviously good vehicles out there. Corey LaJoy and the Ford has run very well. We've seen Chevrolets run well, but no one has gotten to victory lane other than a Toyota this year. And obviously Toyota hasn't been around that long in NASCAR, but this is the 56th race here at Loudoun for the East Series, and 36 of those have been won by Chevrolet. <laughs> and they would like to break the streak of Toyotas in the 2011 season. Lap 45 of 125. Again, the magic number 63 is the halfway point. As a lot of people continue to look to the sky to see the clouds rolling in and the potential of rain. We see Chase Elliott looking a little bit higher on Ben Kennedy. And you mentioned Robert Johnson in that 11. It's amazing how the uh, the history of NASCAR is kind of in that little shot right there. You've got Junior Johnson's son leading that battle right there. Then Lisa France Kennedy's son in second and Bill Elliott's son running third in that little battle. The history of NASCAR right there on the screen. Ben's going to pull to the inside of Robert Johnson to try to make that move. Way down, even left side tires underneath the yellow line was Ben Kennedy. And now we see Chase Elliott taking advantage of a little bit slower Ben Kennedy as he tried that low line and it didn't work out. And Chase Elliott gets by. Ben's going to go down there again, try to see if he can get up there with Chase Elliott. Now Chase is going to move to the outside of Robert Johnson. Robert Johnson won't be able to get on the throttle as quickly coming out of four. And Chase Elliott gets by. It's a good example of that outside groove having some grip up there. Nice move by Chase. Chase has made it work, the outside groove, and he's been able to get by both Robert Johnson and Ben Kennedy. Now he'll set his sights on the aid of Michael Cherry. Fifteen-year-old Chase Elliott. It's amazing how talented these young drivers are. A lot of young drivers in the field. Brett Moffitt, one of the young ones up there, leading this race. Sergio Pena runs second.